Hi, Trisha Morris here with yet another page kit assembly workshop. This one is featuring Club Scraps in transit collection. I absolutely love how rich and yet cool this color palette is. The art is really neat. Vintage travel, not way, way back, but some really the golden age of travel here. And I, I think you're going to love this collection. Now, the ribbons, of course, we selected. Um, I have this beautiful, it's a satin black with a metallic edge. And then we've got this really cool organza with this fringe edge and then a nice blue grow grain. We've got some cool manila claim checks here a series of silver charms and buttons and then of course our pre-cut photo mats and a sheet of custom made stickers so these were made uh, designed by Jacqueline in-house here and printed and die cut just for us so I think it's really cool to have our own sheet and then um, what we're going to do first of all is sort all of our papers in the order we'll need to trim it. This is our tradition here, Club Scrap. And also before we do that, I'm going to sort the photo mats as well. So these are pre-cut to four and a quarter by six and a quarter and to just make a more efficient use of the parent size sheets of paper for us. So I'm going to take my accordion pocket file. This keeps me nice and organized. I'm using my vertical surfaces and, and going up and down rather than my horizontal surfaces, which is kind of nice. We have a lot of vertical, but not very much horizontal, if you know what I'm saying. So this will sit um, underneath my trimmer base. And then I've got the four pockets. So anytime I reference pocket one and two, it'll go in the first pocket and so on. And if you don't have this accordion pocket file, reach out to us for help. We can set you up with a kid, a video tutorial, and get you making your very own. And in the meantime, just keep four, maybe four post-it notes with the same labels so that you can stay organized along with us. Okay, so with these photo mats, let's get sorting these out. Um, we're going to take one of the gray now let's just talk about color for a second we've got blue we have metallic sand it's just a beautiful shimmery color this really cool cool gray it's definitely a nice cool color and then we have a linen textured black so when i say gray it's a very bluish gray so just keep that in mind one of those blue grays goes in pocket one and two along with one black so again that's got a beautiful texture to it nice heavy paper um, then let's move on to the three blue photo mats. One, two, three. These are uh, really cool texture as well. This kit is just, mm, the paper is luscious. All three of those go into pocket three and four. And then we're going to take two of the metallic sand that goes in pocket five and six. One of the black also going in five and six. And then two gray. It should be everything one metallic sand and one black those go into pocket seven and eight so we got that done now grab all the paper that came in your kit we're going to sort it in the order we're going to use it that means trim it or even use it in our pages i I always say this, but I do like to hold the paper up like vertically in the crook of my arm so I can see it from the top edge just like when you were <clears throat> younger like in the seventies shopping for records at the record store. <laughs> Best way to see them, right? Not laying flat, but laying sitting up. So we're going to find uh, the, one of the collage prints. And this is just going to be the collage photographs of different forms of travel. I'm going to put that face down on my cutting mat and then look for a gray plane. So again, that's not the, it's the bluish gray that we're looking for followed by a blue. So again, this has that beautiful cord texture. Mm, you're going to love it. And it's on both sides, which is kind of nice. Um, then black. This has the linen texture, primarily on one side. Then from the back of your stack, typically Deb collates these uh, with the cut-aparts at the bottom. So I want you to find the cut-apart that has the word adventure is out there and these check borders put that face down and then this next one that says oh snap here and the in the camera um, it's a big world let's put that face down next we're going to find the remaining gray print right here that goes followed by the train print and I absolutely love how I was able to incorporate this look into our collection and then we've got the metallic sand 12 by 12 grabbing one of those and that's the same on both sides. And you have your black linen, so I'll put that face down. Um, then let's go to the other train print, super cool, followed by metallic sand, then the collage, 
and we'll finish with the blue again. Now, with everything sort of facing down, I'm gonna flip that whole stack right on over so that the collage print is right back on top. And let's get our trimmers going. If you do not have this trimmer, I, I did hear that our inventory has run out. We're experiencing some shipping delays like many people across all industries. So if you're waiting for this trimmer, sit tight, but make sure you pick one of these up because it's it's essential to the success of this whole program. You really need this, this model. <laughs> um, I mean, not all trimmers are created equal and some are you can spend a lot of money on but aren't as effective as this one. Okay, enough about that. Uh, as far as speed goes, I know a lot of you are new. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. If you are new, I'm going to be going too fast for you. And um, But again, if you've been around for you know a number of months and you're getting more proficient, I'll probably go just right. So to slow me down, just click on that gear button in the lower right corner of your playback screen on YouTube. And then you can choose the playback speed to be like 0.75. Give that a whirl. If that's still too fast, try 0.5 and that'll really slow me down. Now I'm going to place this collage print into the trimmer with this largest airplane image. This is my favorite of the whole thing. That's going to be in the upper right corner. And I want you to cut at seven and a half. So for those, again, if you're new, make sure you're looking at the inches, not the centimeters. I usually find the whole number seven and go to the left for the, the quarters and halves and stuff. So seven, seven and a quarter is one column. Seven and a half is going to be the two columns. And then we're going to slide down to three and three quarters. So again, three, go to the left, three columns. That gets me to three and three quarters. As another reminder, just let the paper pile up to the right of the blade as we trim it. And then I'll have you file it along with me one piece at a time. So this piece in the top of your trimmer right now that remains there, put that in pocket one and two. And file these longer pieces at an angle into the pocket so you can still see the numbers on the left. Then you do have two more pieces from this print sitting to the right of your trimmer. Gather both of those up and place them in pocket five and six in the same exact manner. And then I'm going to just secure that and grab my gray. So this is not blue. It's gray, but it's really blue gray. Okay, so let's trim this one at 11 and three quarters. So it's really close to 12. And then 10 and a half. And then all the way down to four. Rotate the four inch piece that we just created and slice at six. That's going to give you two four by sixes and those both go in pocket three and four. And this much larger piece that goes in pocket one and two and along with the wider and narrower strips that we created. So, so far no scraps, it's kind of exciting. And grab the blue plane. This is actual blue. We're gonna cut at 11 and a quarter, and 10 and a half, and six and three quarters. Now rotate and cut at nine and a quarter. Okay, so this uh, larger piece goes in pocket seven and eight. The smaller strip we're going to trim horizontally at six and three. All right, these two rectangles will be placed in pocket five and six. And then we have this little tiny piece that goes in one and two, believe it or not. To the right of your blade is going to be another wider piece. We're going to trim this on all the numbers divisible by three. So that's nine, six, and three. So you made four rectangles that are all the same. Just take two of them and put them in pocket one and two. And the other two will go in seven and eight. It doesn't matter the order that it lands inside the pocket as long as it lands in the pockets. <laughs> okay, then you have two more strips left. Both of these go in five and six, and we're grabbing the black plane. We still have no scraps. All right, I'm gonna trim this one at 10, and then eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. We're gonna do the same thing again. All numbers divisible by three, so that makes it nine, six, and three. You just made four pieces the same, two of them, three and four, 
and the other two will go in seven and eight. Grab the next strip. This is the same size as the previous one and the next one. This one we're going to trim at 11, eight and a quarter, five and a half, two and three quarters. All of these, uh, they're squares and the little piece that fell off the end all of that goes in pocket one and two all right this next strip we're going to trim at eleven and a quarter nine and a quarter and five and a quarter lots of quarters there all right here we go we've got this longer piece that goes in five and six then you have two additional pieces that are you know, like large and medium. Those both go into one and two. And then you have this really little guy that's going into three and four. Now we have a skinnier strip left for five and six, for pocket five and six. And then this last remaining two inch strip, that's three and four. Still, hmm, no scraps, love it. Okay, now again, if you're new, this, this is especially for you, but if you look at the corners of each corner of these cut aparts, you're going to notice this little uh, plus shaped hash mark. Make sure you can see that. And basically, these are trimming guides to help you figure out how to trim the outside perimeter of this sheet. So, I'm going to put this in my trimmer and I'm going to look at that little hash mark, line it up right with the outside edge of my blade, and just cut along that. So, I'm removing anything past the hash mark. <laughs> Can go and do that more accurately again once you make a couple of turns. Then I'm rotating the paper uh, one turn and then doing the same thing on this edge. Now once I get to this edge, if I did a good job over here, I should be able to put it in at 12 inches and then it'll line up with those hash marks on the other side. And then same for this final rotation. I should be able to cut at 12 to make this edge kind of go away. I'm going to discard all of those little end cuts and then we're gonna follow the trimming instructions as shown in step five of your instructions, and I'm gonna trim at 11 and a half. Of course, you wanna make sure that you're not cutting through artwork, and if you are, then you probably need to rotate. As a rule, I always trim off the skinniest pieces first. So again, that's 11 and a half, and 11, and nine and a half. And you don't need to look at these numbers. If you don't want to, you can just kind of eyeball and see the nearest at the nearest quarter inch. So this is at eight inches is next. And then six and three and a half. Okay, now I'm going to rotate so that the motorcycle is on the right and we'll cut at nine and a half and four and three quarters. All right, this large plane goes in pocket five and six. Hit the rails, three and four and the motorcycle, one and two. The next strip will trim horizontally, make sure it reads right side up, so go explore should be over here. And we'll cut at seven and a half, and three and a half. Okay, now these, the go explore, let's file that in five and six. Life is meant, seven and eight, and live your life by a compass, not a clock. I love that, three and four. Now we have a bunch of strips. I'm just going to pick all those up at, at once if possible, keeping them in the order they landed. There's a wider piece with this map on it that goes in seven and eight. The more narrow piece, three and four. Let's see, get that in there. Adventure is out there, five and six. And then these two checked border strips, five and six also. Okay, now one more round of this with the cut apart. So we have another sheet to do, same deal. Just uh, find that little plus sign, line it up with your trimmer blade and work your way around the whole piece until you have a nice perfect 12 by 12. Now again, following the same policy, I'm gonna put It's a Big World on the far right and I'll cut at 11 and then 10 eight and a quarter, six and a half, and four. 
Now rotate this four inch piece so that the skinny guys are on the far right and we'll cut at 11, 10 and a quarter, nine and a half. Now I think if you can get these divided, don't worry so much about margin, I'm just gonna cut, this is around like almost seven and three quarters just to separate out the, the car. Yeah, I just got it, <laughs> okay. And then finally six inches. We're gonna fussy cut those elements so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, this um, large journaling prompt and photo spot, that goes in seven and eight. And then we have the car here that goes in five and six. Two cameras, both of them are used in pocket one and two. And then we've got these little fun shapes. Those go in seven and eight, those little tags, both of them. Then you have a little journaling prompt at the airplane. That goes in one and two. Okay, now this next one, there's this large element. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut that at eight. And this big element goes in seven and eight. And then the little passport journaling prompt, five and six. Haven't used my passport lately, but I've used it a lot in the past. Okay, now we have a bunch of cuts to make here. Make sure the word date is on the right. We're gonna make a bunch of one inch pieces. So that's 11, subtract from 12 here. Then 10, nine, eight, and seven. And now we're gonna change our measurement a little bit. We're gonna go down to five and a quarter, three and a half, and then one and three quarters. Okay, so I really hope that everything landed in the order that you trimmed it. <laughs> so hit the road, one and two. Travel, seven and eight. Explore, three and four. Good times come, five and six. Jack, <laughs> one and two. The only thing you buy that makes you richer, seven and eight. The Unseen, three and four. To Those That Go, five and six. And then the date, one and two. So those are designed to fit perfectly into, onto these claim tags. So like that little that little word, Jack, for hit the road. Hit the road will be on the top and then that'll fit right in there. So cool. In fact, you could put one of these, if you have those manila tags handy, you can go ahead and put one of them in each pocket because that's where those are gonna be used, one per page. Now we just have a few more pieces to file here. We've got the, in the end, we only regret the vacation we didn't take. That's three and four. And then it's a big world, both of these strips. One and two. Okay. I really am excited about this because in all of that trimming process, we didn't create a single unused piece. Like every single paper in this whole collection that we delivered to you will be used on your pages. Isn't that cool? No scraps, scrapping. Okay, and center trimmer aside, and um, you know, for those of you who are new to using this, the um, the Velcro and the trimmer base is what's holding this vertical. So from now on, I'll work with it just laying on its side. And now we have a remaining pile of paper. We have all these stickers. I'm going to set those stickers aside. And this stack of paper should have the gray color on top. And then I also, in your instructions, want you to turn to the bottom of page four, uh, layout seven and eight. I'm going to take the entire stack here and put it, uh, imagine this is the center of your workspace. Take the top sheet and slide it to the right and leave the rest of the stack on your left. So that's how we know the pieces that are gonna be used for the base of layout seven and eight. We'll work backwards from eight to one so that when we're done dry fitting, meaning placing the pieces from the pockets onto the appropriate side of the layout without adhesive, once we're done with that, all you have left to do is just adhere everything at your leisure and then add your pictures, which is going to be, it's going to work great. If you haven't used this method yet, um, you're going to be pleasantly surprised at how much more efficient you can be with your scrapbooking. Um, I've had a lot of members tell me this really, this method really, really works for them. And uh, so I hope if you've never tried it to the finish line before that you will with this beautiful collection. Now with this train print, I, you know, I, I thought it was so beautiful. I didn't want to cover much of it up, but we do need to scrapbook, right? So that's why I have this place right here as a foundation for two gray prints. So that large blue is basically a mat for our largest focal image on this layout. Then on the right side, I'm going to take this metallic sand mat and um, below it, I'm going to place this border strip and above it, I'm going to grab those two 
uh, dark blue pieces. And I like how this kind of puzzles in. So if you notice, these will go side by side. I have a little bit of space between them. And then right below that is my border strip. And below that, the two horizontal uh, black smaller mats can go here. Now let's say you have one horizontal picture you want to put there, just put it right over the, the, the gap between the two pieces. Otherwise, two smaller verticals can go there. Um, then we have another black mat. Now it's a little bit hard to tell, but I did nest it with this piece. And then we have our fun little, um, oh, actually, I'm going to have you place this eight inch uh, embellishment. Kind of tuck that in, framing it right in there. I just, this came together like, just like the perfect puzzle. Then that's going to go in the spot along with the travel. And the only thing that make you buy that makes you richer. Mm -mm -mm. Love that. Okay, then on the left here, I've got this cut apart. And then I have, I hate when people accuse me of lollygagging when I'm quite clearly dilly-dallying. <laughs> so fun. Okay, now a couple of finishing tips. You'll notice that on these smaller graphics that the corners are rounded, so you can just leave it as it is. But if you happen to have a corner chomper, you can find the quarter inch setting, and that's always legible on the side of the unit. Then make sure it might probably will come like this and open up the, the little butterfly there, put it into the perfect corner, and squeeze on the quarter inch setting is the correct size for trimming that shape. And you can do the same thing on the smaller one, and you can do that do it on all of them. A lot of times when I'm making my layouts, I mean, there's no, I have to make the plan. So when I trim all of this stuff, trim out the cut aparts, I do that right away. Same thing for this little cut apart here. I just took a ruler and a craft knife, or you can take a scissors and just cut a little V into the side of that. And all those things are optional, okay? Now on this kind of fun shape, if you happen to have a circle punch, I mean, you can use scissors, of course, too, but if you just kind of slide it in there near the corner and back off about an eighth of an inch, it'll perfectly curve to clip away that corner so nicely. So I use the corner punch on these smaller ones and also on this larger frame, corner punched it, attached it, and then corner punched the black uh, photo mat as well. So that's up to you if you want to incorporate that. It's completely optional. Let me show you the finished page so you can get, idea, get an idea of how this came together. Now remember, if you can't figure out where an object came from, it's probably uh, from the sticker sheet. So I used every single sticker on here except for this larger one here. I just didn't have room for it. So the where here was placed on top. Um, I did knot the end of the, the cord on the tag and glued it in place so it wouldn't be flying around anywhere. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward on this one. On the facing page, the, the, I added three of the silver buttons and I used some uh, wax linen on a needle. Now, if you have a stitching needle, like a tapestry needle or something, just make sure that the needle will slide through the eyes on the buttons, uh, the holes in the buttons so that um, it doesn't get stuck. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. Here's there's a little camera sticker that I used from the sheet. So that's, that's seven and eight and we're just clipping right along, right? Um, I'm gonna take now this, the base of page seven, slide it over and rest it on top of page eight. And then later when I come back, even if everything is all messed up, I'll still know I have the pieces where they're gonna belong. And then just take that metallic sand paper, not sand paper, but the sand paper. <laughs> I'm just cracking myself up here. And slide it over on top of page seven. So now I have black and sand side by side. And that will correspond with what you see in the image on page uh, top of page four of your instructions for layout five and six. So that means we have to empty the pocket labeled five and six, which I will do now. And then I like to gather up everything that I took out of the pocket in my left hand or your non-dominant hand and then distribute with the other hand. So like just like when you deal cards, the most efficient way is to you know, deal cards from the tabletop. You deal them from your hand. So here I'm looking for this larger collage print will be flush with the top edge and then the smaller collage print will be flush with the bottom edge on the right side. And then we're gonna separate. So I'm gonna take one of these blue strips and put it right up against the print and then nest one of these lovely little checkered borders on top of that. And we should be able to do that a second time on the right side of that layout, which is cool. And then nest that. Okay. Now vertically, 
will be able to fit if everything went according to plan it'll fit nicely two sand photo mats and um, then to the left of that you can fit two of these smaller blue ones vertically and that's gonna make it puzzle in beautifully okay then I have this long skinny piece and it should fit with the manila tag to the right of that I'm gonna put a horizontal black photo mat and then you can nest the border strip adventure is out there with a the black and then you're gonna tuck that in so that it creates the perfect frame around that mat then you're going to fussy cut the car and that's going to go up here i'll show you in a minute how cool that's going to be down here the journaling prompt i used some stickers which i'll show you now this is kind of funny what happened here but when we laid out the art somehow it just slipped a little bit and landed on the edge of our cut apart and i apologize for that but all i did was just fussy cut it just along the edge with scissors i didn't use a trimmer just trimmed around the picture and it happens to be the exact same size as this here so when i attached it i foam i used foam adhesive and offset it just a little bit and it gives it some really nice focal attention and a little dimension as well so then the goal explorer goes here and then you have the two little elements that will be layered onto the tag, rounded corners if you wish. But the finish layout, a couple of things to point out on the right side here. And you can see how much fun I had with this. So here's the fussy cut car adhered with foam adhesive. And then I added the little silver passport charm that's included in your kit. I attached it with our, foam, our um, liquid bookbinding glue from a needle tipped applicator that looks kind of like this. We have them in, in clear and black. And um, once you allow that glue to dry, this charm isn't going to go anywhere. You got a sticker added here. And then this larger, I want to travel the world sticker with the airplane right above it, kind of circling in around this. So they're overlapping a little bit, which is cool. Again, rounded the corners, attached with foam adhesive. Now the other spacing page, I actually added some of this really cool fringed ribbon and I was going to go back and add it to this side but I forgot <laughs> so there you have it um, and here you can see my fussy cut plane image popped out on there which is pretty cool along with the go explore all right that was layout five and six so if you know the routine now even if you're new you might know that the next step is to pick this piece up and slide it on top of the, the layout on the right and then take one more piece and slide it and then I have everything I need for layouts three and four in the pocket, hypothetically. And you know, this whole process of dry fitting or just laying this in, checking it out, um, it does solve any misfiling problems or if you know you forgot something somewhere, or even if I did, often I catch errors in my own uh, instructions during this step and I have to go back and fix it. So anyway, um, here we go. This is gonna be fun and I love how this I love how this one turned out so across the top we've got this border strip here that will nest with in the end we only regret the vacations we didn't take a vertical blue mat then we got this guy kind of peeking in there and then on this one I took scissors and this tiny little piece of black and I've been doing this a lot just because we can utilize these smaller pieces as anchoring strips for embellishments so I know I cut a little banner and then just tuck it right behind this mat here. And then on the left side, if you start out with the two dark blue or just the blue mats, I could have really called this light blue, but oh, it's just kind of, it's, it's beige. It's blue, it's gray. I don't know, it's gray. Um, below those nested mats then that you just saw me nest, I'm gonna add two horizontal black and see how that fits. It all fits like a film strip almost. To the left of it, how about a border strip? And then you're going to notice in the instructions a piece of dark blue something to the left of the strip. And what that is, is this um, grosgrain ribbon that's been trimmed. You get like tons of yardage of this. It's been trimmed and wrapped here and taped on the back. So that's just adding a little anchoring to that side of the layout. And then to the left of that or overlapping I rounded the corners on the right side of this. You could do the top corners, could be kind of cool. Hit the rails is just across the top. Added some stickers and then added this manila claim tag with the accents. I think it's so clever how Jacqueline designed those to fit. Now, finished page wise, I did quite a bit of embellishing. 
first of all, you got this super cool charm with the Enjoy the Journey uh, stamped into it with the two loops on either end. And I strung the thin grosgrain ribbon in one piece coming from the right side. I folded that in half and taped in the back. Then I took the other piece and taped that to the back as well. So this is this is uh, you know, 24 inches of the ribbon is used here, but I think it's extremely eye-catching. And then with a little bit of space in between there, I added the cruise ship sticker, which is pretty neat. And they still have room for journaling right here where those faint lines are. Now, do you see that little scrap that was rescued? Now three silver buttons. I've, I sewed them on, again, with some waxed linen thread. Use any thread that you have, any thin fiber, jute, whatever. Um, the thread is not included in the kit, by the way, but most of us have something like that laying around. And then we have layout number three. Okay, hit the rails. I love this. My husband used to work for Burlington Northern Railroad, so he's going to love this collection. Um, look at the sticker. Sneeze. <laughs> I haven't done one of these in a while, but I think it turned out really cool. So I started with this. Okay, then I added the passport sticker at an angle. Let the good times roll with the glow below that. And then I, on top of it, so it's just like a little assembly, a little collage. And a charm with bookbinding glue and then a button with thread been added okay we are reaching the end of our time together I can't hardly believe it it's flying by it's actually a Friday night everyone has left the office for the day and I have the whole place to myself and you know I kind of like it's like being in my creative space here I hope you like that too I hope you enjoy this process and you know how truly efficient it is and how rewarding it can be when you add your pictures to your pages and you can be productive and respectful of all of the materials and oh it's just it's so great all right let's finish this up now the base of page two gets this huge piece of gray going vertically across and then you can add a photo mat up top here i'm going to get rid of this large piece that actually goes kind of through the middle of page one and i, I left a little bit of this collage showing I have it about an inch from the edge, by the way, but it, you have, you can put it wherever you want. <laughs> it's, you can put anything where you want. <laughs> it's your own darn page. Now here I have the little vertical three inch pieces, and then there's um, a pairing, an oblong black, and then sort of a smaller piece. And I left this area intentionally open, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. Um, I'm also gonna separate these cameras the larger camera is going to go down here on the right, along with that little word, the little date. And then let me just show you how I did this. This is just like what I did with that airplane image. I just took scissors and I cut. It's kind of got a little bit of a deckle edge on this, and that's why I'm just freestyling with my scissors. So this, this project should take you about, I don't know, 30 seconds, and you're done. And this came right over here. Then I did the whole little chevron, you know, cut a little V into the end of each of these. You can see this is longer than the black piece. That doesn't matter. And it's gonna get tucked behind there once you cut the V into, into the end. Now, on the left side, across the top, I did my little trick where I trimmed these into two and three quarter inch squares. And if you do that, you get the total filmed strip option again so if I just equally space these look how nice they fit below that goes this strip I'm going to hook it right up to the collage print there and then top the strip with it's a big world then I had this quarter inch piece of the gray and that's going to go right below with the other matching strip so this is coming together so nicely on page one let's see we've got some stickers over here, several, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. And then this vertically in the center. And by the way, if you choose not to use any of the stickers, I don't think this will be negatively affected. Um, it'll just be a little less embellished, but the stickers add, just add a lot. Okay, now this journaling prompt's gonna go down in the lower left corner, and then above that, I'm adding the claim check along with those two little things that fit. This is hit the road jack, which I think is hysterical. And then once you trim out this camera, it, it'll fit right into that spot here. 
you'll see some other artwork again coming from the sticker sheet. Okay, so these are just peel and stick. Once everything is, is glued, you, you know, or adhered, you can go ahead and add your stickers. And I'll show you some finishing touches here on this last pair of pages. Uh, all right, there's that little chevron end. And I added the here we go from the sticker sheet, which is super, it's eye catching. And then you can even bring the eye to it more with this super cool airplane. <laughs> okay, then my favorite embellishment. So here you see the wrap. I wrapped some of this metallic edged satin in that opening spot. And then once it was wrapped and secured at the back, I tied a little extra bow onto it. And then on that smaller rectangle, the bottom of the page, I took the camera that I'd cut out and a small length of that grow grain ribbon and stapled it with my mini stapler. I just have a little inexpensive, I don't know, Office Depot style uh, stapler with the tiny staples. And look how cute that is, right? Oh my gosh. I uh, popped out of this as well with some foam adhesive circles. Then on page one, lots of really fun things going on here. The initial layout, I showed you everything there is to know with that. Something unique that I did though, this is from the sticker sheet, but I wanted it popped out it. I just wanted to mention on this particular piece and I wanted it to overlay. So I basically just stuck this to a piece of scrap cardstock. I used ivory, doesn't really matter. Um, and then I trimmed it out so that I could raise it and add a little dimension here and layering. Love how that looked. Another sticker here. Then on the left, I just added that little camera in the corner with pop dot, and these also are you know, with foam adhesive. Once again, you can see how I've adhered the, the knot that I made with the book binding glue so this wouldn't be flying all over the place. And I think it looks pretty fantastic. That was fun. And now I'm going to start my weekend and maybe I'll edit this tomorrow so it's ready to go for all of you to learn from. And I just want to thank you for joining me. This is this is one of my favorite things to do. It's the culmination of, of lots and lots of hard work uh, involving many, many people. And it's an honor to bring these kits to this far to the finish line. I mean, the finish line really is adding photos, of course. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. If you like this collection and want to make cards to match, join me for my monthly card kit class. We follow the same protocols of sorting, trimming, filing, and then scoring and organizing them into cards with very, very few scraps. We're going to have a lot of fun together. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can find out. We're going to be doing some YouTube lives pretty soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing. And I'll see you next month.